Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for BAO's Medicare Open Enrollment Lecture. This is a Bay Area Older Adults presentation, which I will call BAO for short. BAO is a nonprofit organization that improves the health and well being of more than 50,000 adults age 50 plus each year through educational, outdoors, and social programs. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker for today is Maha Justi. Maha is uh, from Health Insurance Counseling Advocacy Program called HypeCap, and she will detail um, all one needs to know about enrolling and finding the best opportunities for Medicare. Uh, we will provide the con uh, contact information for HICAP uh, Santa Clara. And HICAP assistance is free and it includes community education services and individual counseling. We thought this topic might be useful for the group since open enrollment is coming up and some of you are enrolling for the first time and others may want to make changes to their plans. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to present to you this morning. My name is Meha Justi, and I am a certified HICAP counselor. Um, HICAP is a, a acronym for Health Insurance Counseling and Advocacy Program. Our job is to try to demystify Medicare so uh, all of you can make informed decisions we are unbiased. We uh, are not um, related to any insurance companies. Um, we are part of a national program that exists in every county. And the purpose of the program, which is uh, dictated by Congress, that there need to be somebody in every location, in every county, that Medicare beneficiary can talk to so they can understand what is Medicare is all about instead of having to wait in a long, um, phone line. So with that, I'll go over our agenda for this morning. Um, I will talk about something called original Medicare and what are the alternatives to this original Medicare. We'll go over enrollment. We'll talk about um, some important information about premium and how the premium could be impacted with your income. And last but not least, a special topic, which is to wrap it all up and hopefully you understand enough about Medicare to make sense of the coming annual enrollment. Okay, so with that, um, let's start with uh, the basic Medicare. Um, if you are not on Medicare already, um, you, um, you basically have heard about it. People who have Medicare uh, get this nice card here, red, white, and blue. Um, Medicare is a program that is a health insurance for people 65 and over. Um, it is also available for people under 65 uh, who have disability or have ALS or end stage rate of disease. It's for US citizen and residents. Uh, you can get it on your own work history or the work history of your spouse or an ex-spouse. Uh, it is mainly for medically necessary services. So it's not meant for any cosmetic surgery or anything exotic. It's really medically necessary service. Okay, so um, Medicare comes in two parts and we call that original Medicare. This is very important to understand the terminology. Original Medicare is part A and part B. This program goes back to 1965, Lyndon Johnson, the Part A, which is the hospital insurance mainly, is funded by your payroll tax that you pay as you work or your spouse works. Part B is funded by uh, your premium that you pay, as well as coming up from the general budget. The enrollment for Medicare is managed by the Social Security so Administration. So if you actually want to sign up for Medicare, you have to go to Social Security Administration. However, the program itself is managed by an agency called um, CMS, which stands for uh, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. 
Uh, both these agency are federal agency because this is a federal program. Part A, would you like, th we'd like to think of part A as uh, the, the insurance that covers institutions. So the institution could be a hospital. So if you're inpatient in a hospital, uh, if you're in a nursing home or a hospice, um, this is really what is covered under A. What's covered under B is medical insurance doctors. So those doctors could be inside a hospital or outside of the hospital. You could be an outpatient. You could be getting uh, a durable medical equipment. You can be getting um, certain services. All that is under Part B. Anytime we talk about health insurance, we talk about three things. We talk about the premium that one has to pay uh, monthly. We talk about deductible, which is something that you pay before the service starts. And we talk about copay, where um, as you get the service, you have these um, extra uh, things to pay, a co-insurance to pay. Now, if we looked at the hospital insurance, for most people who have worked 40 quarters in the US, uh, their premium is zero. So because you basically pay for it uh, through your payroll tax. The deductible is something that changes every year and it's not annual. It's something that's per benefit period. What does that mean benefit periods? It means that as an example, if you go to a hospital, they say, ah, oh, we need $1,556 for 2022. You leave the hospital, you stay out of the hospital for 60 days, you come back on day 61, they will ask you your benefit period expired. Sorry, you, we, we need to pay this, um, this deductible once more. So obviously that could get pretty expensive. It could roll four or five times a year. Now, as far as the copay is concerned, once you pay your deductible, your first 60 day in the hospital have zero copay. If you stay longer, then it start uh, paying additional um, copay. Now, as far as Part B is concerned, again, um, there is a premium. Not unlike in the, in the case of Part um, A, Part B has a premium that is determined every year. In 2022, this premium uh, was $170.10 for most people. The deductible, on the other hand, is something on an annual basis. So the first $233 is something you have to pay. After that, you're, you've met your deductible. Once you have met your deductible, you have a 20% copay. So if the bill is $100, $80 is paid by Medicare, $20 you would have to pay yourself. So when you look at this picture here, and if the only insurance you have is original Medicare, you would very quickly realize there is gaps. So keep that in mind, there's something called gaps. This is gaps, things that you have to pay yourself. So um, for most people, that's a bit of worry to have these gaps. So they look for ways to supplement this original Medicare so they can have a more um, predictable uh, exp uh, expenses throughout the year. So the first way that people supplement this original Medicare is something called Part D. Part D is a prescription drug plan that is um, that is offered by private companies. Um, those private companies have to follow certain Medicare rules, but nevertheless, they are private companies. So to keep in mind, a and B are a federal program offered by the federal government, but Part D is uh, offered by private insurance that you have the option to buy. Again, if we continue on our cost analysis, Part D has a premium, and depending on these private insurers, the premium could be anywhere between $7 a month and $150 a month, depending on the plan you select. The deductible cannot exceed $480. It could be zero, it's up to the company, but 400 is the what Medicare set as the limit. And each year, this uh, this changes this number. Now, as far as the copay is concerned, it very much depends on what medication you have, what tier, if it's a generic, it might be a dollar or nothing. If it's a very, a very uh, 
a specialty drug brand name, it could be quite expensive. Okay, so now we have the original Medicare for the hospital, for doctor, and we have some prescription drug coverage. Again, most people say this is really not enough. So what else can they get? Um, the other thing you can get is something called Medigap. So remember that word gap. So the Medigap is what actually uh, supplement the gaps in A and B. So you actually take insurance to cover some of these gaps here. Again, Medigap is sometimes is also called Medicare supplement for part A and B. Um, this is additional insurance you can buy also from private companies. Again, these are regulated, but nevertheless, um, they are offered by private companies. So again, continue in our picture, Medigap is something you, you buy and it has a premium. Uh, and the premium will depend on, on, on the plan you buy, and it could be anywhere between $100 or $300. Um, it does not have a deductible. It's tied to Part B. So as soon as you um, uh, have met your deductible for Part B, the Medigap kicks in. Again, the copay will depend on the plan. So let's dig in a little bit deeper to see what that really means. So we talked about gaps. For example, there are gaps where um, Medicare Part B has a co-insurance of 20%. So now you don't wanna really, that could get expensive if you go to doctors a lot. So there are plans, that plans A, B, D, G, and so on. And these plans would cover these 20%. So if you go to a doctor that is accept assignment from Medicare, Medicare, original Medicare will pay the first 80% and your supplement, depending which supplement you get, will pay your uh, 20%. And um, if you kind of just go down the line here, you will notice very quickly that the deluxe um, plan, if you want like the best plan that covers everything or just virtually everything, except part B deductible, which is $233, it's called G, as in girl. So that's kind of the highest. The lowest is plan A. Um, one word of warning is that once you sign up for a Medicare a Medigap plan, you can always go down in, in coverage, but you cannot go up. So another word, if you're 65 and healthy, and you say, oh, I'm just going to go for plan A, uh, Medigap plan A, which is probably um, the uh, premium is obviously lower than G, that's fine. However, just bear in mind, as you get older, you cannot switch over to a G. So you can always go down, but not up. Okay, so now we have the whole picture. We have the original Medicare, which is A and B. We have the supplements, um, the two ways we supplemented it, which is prescription drugs and uh, the um, Medigap. So this is something that's original Medicare and this is something that you buy. Okay, what are the pros and cons of having this, what I call Medicare Plus? Well, if you have this kind of scheme, you can go to any doctor, you can go to any hospital across the country as long as they're Medicare doctors and they accept new patients. Uh, you don't need a referral, so this is not an HMO type of a scheme. Um, in some respect, your, uh, your um, expenses are predictable. So you don't really, uh, if, you, if you didn't have a supplement, um, then the 20%, depending how often you go to a doctor, that could be unpredictable. Um, you could switch the, these two plans, the Medigap and the, and the Part D, you can switch them every year. Um, as far as, for example, if you decide to take a, a Medigap plan with uh, Humana um, and the price went up, uh, there's a certain time of the year where you can switch to, uh, to another company. Now, uh, if you have Plan G, for example, Plan G is always the same. The benefits are always the same in every company. So 
uh, it's, it's highly regulated by law. What are the disadvantages? Well, the disadvantages is you have a premium that you have to pay whether you go to doctors or not. So um, if you don't have it, you can say, well, I'm not paying the 20% because I'm not going to doctors, but then you expose yourself to risk. So this is kind of the pros and cons here. Um, other ways you could uh, supplement your original Medicare is if you have an employer retirement plan. An employer could be offering you coverage, and this is something we always tell people, please uh, look at these plans carefully to see if it's better to go with your employer plan or is it better to just go on your own and get a Part D and, um, and a Medigap on your own. Um, to be quite honest, in the olden days, uh, employer plans, retirement plans were extremely generous. Uh, we've seen the trends that they're getting, they're getting not so generous as time goes by. So please review and look at, at um, the differences. Again, the retirement plans, employer retirement plans, um, has to be reviewed carefully. So just because they're a benefit from your employer, it doesn't mean it's the best thing for you. Uh, what is the bad things about it or disadvantage? Well, if you decide to go with your employer retirement plan um, and you stay with that plan for more than six months, you are not guaranteed to be able to buy a supplement because the supplement, the Medigap supplement, has certain time of the year where you have a federal guarantee that that these private companies have to take you. But if that six months is over, they have no obligation to take you. They might take you, but they have no obligation to take you. Um, and they might subject you to uh, underwriting, a phys a, you know, examination, they might uh, charge you more. So this is something we tell people to please consider carefully when, you, when you're comparing these things. So that's the first segment. And I wonder if we have any questions before we dig in deeper um so i'm not seeing any questions yet on our end uh, but um okay maybe, then uh, i will i will continue on so so hopefully you have an idea what is original medicare and you have and and, and the, the the pluses that you can supplement the original medicare so what are the alternative to this original medicare so this is the original Medicare that I just talked about, this box here, A and B. And then we talked about the how you can complement it. So you can have this nice package here that's called Original Medicare Plus. However, that's not the only way you could receive Medicare. Um, you could have an alternative plan that's, that is all in one. And those plans are called Medicare Advantage. And sometimes you call them MA. So, Medicare Advantage plan, this is a name. It doesn't mean that it's an advantage or a disadvantage. This is a marketing name. Now, those plans are basically all in one. What does that mean all in one? You still have to have A and B. You actually still have to uh, pay your Part B premium. Um, and then the federal government actually takes that money and passes it on to these companies and they say, this beneficiary now is yours. You can offer him the plan, you can offer him, but you have to offer him services to cover these two things. Um, so an example of one of those plans could be Kaiser, could be uh, some ARP plans. And um, so the only, the only difference really here is that it's all in one. You get one plan and you have to kind of live within that plan and with, within the rules of that plan. So um, the reason I emphasize all these things is that because once come the annual en enrollment each year, you are typically flooded with literature. You are sent so much through the mail and it's very important to try to understand what are they trying to sell me? Are they trying to sell me, because this is also private companies, are they trying to sell me an all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan? Are they trying to sell me a Part D plan? Are they trying to sell me a Medigap plan? So the same company could be trying to sell you, they have these three products. An example, you could have, you can have an ARP 
um, prescription drug plan, you can have, have an ARP um, Medigap plan, or you can have an ARP uh, all-in-one. So it's important to, to understand, you know, where do you fit in this picture here? So um, as I said, it's an, another way of getting Medicare. It's an alternative. You cannot have both. It's either or. Sometimes it's called Part C, although it's not really part of anything. Um, so, and we refer to it as M, uh, MA plan. You must be enrolled into A and B because that's the pot of money that is taken, uh, saved for, for you by the federal government and given to these companies. They're offered by private companies, example, Kaiser, Alignment, Stanford, and they change every year and they're county specific. Uh, they're typically network based. So if you're familiar with the HMO models, so this is a, it doesn't always have to be an HMO, but mostly they're HMO. They may offer extra benefits as dental and vision. These are benefits outside of Medicare. Um, and what we tell people here, just look at it carefully. Uh, this would not be the only reason you would join those plans. There has to be, the whole package has to make sense because you can also go and buy dental coverage or vision coverage on your own separately. So you have to be able to do a, a good comparison. Um, there, they have the benefit of giving you, as long as you stay within the network, uh, there is an out of pocket maximum through the year. So your exposure is limited to a certain amount uh, per year. So what do they look like? They look like, um, so this is usually this like each county would have something like 20 plans. Um, and it would be huge metrics that we at HICAP, either at San Mateo or Santa Clara, would try to summarize as all this information and give it to you so you're able to decide uh, which plan is good for you. But typically these plans would have, would be the name of the plan, whether it's HMO or not, um, how much premium they would like you to pay in addition to your Part B. So in this case, in ARP, uh, it was 107, uh, alignment was 97. There are plans that have zero, for example. There's also a maximum out of pocket as long as you stay in the network or they tell you if you go out of the network how much it would be um they're very um hospital and um and um uh, doctor network uh specific so you can't just go if you decide to to go to this plan you can't just go to any hospital you want you, you can only go to this hospital um same thing with the contracted medical which which uh, contracted medical group you can go to. So it really puts the burden on you to diligently look and see if your doctor belonged to that uh, network or not. And again, that could change every year. So your doctor could be on it one year, uh, but may, maybe drop the next year. Uh, the payment, uh, they would tell you exactly how much it would cost, whether it's a specialist, zero or uh, $10. It would tell you uh, the different procedures you would get, um, ambulance, uh, emergency care, everything would be spelled out. So you could take a look at it and see if it fits um, your needs or not. So again, if we try to frame it in the same way that we have it before um, with premium, deductible and copay, the plan itself, the MA, MA plan itself, could be zero, could be 100 plus, depending on what the plan has to offer. There is no deductible. And the copay, there is definitely a copay for every service. So it could be a little unpredictable because you don't know what kind of services you, you, you need. But on the other hand, your overall cost is limited uh, for the year. Um, the Part A services, they definitely offer you hospital services and you don't need to pay anything extra for that. And there is no deductible. Part B services, you still have to pay your Part B um, as you would if you had original Medicare. Um, and then depending on the plan, the copay is, um, is what, you, what you have to pay. Same thing for Part D. There is no extra premium because they're all in one. So this premium up here is the one that covers basically everything except Part B. And all your costs would be coming out of the copays, which you have to look at very carefully. What are the pros and cons? They certainly could be cheaper because if you don't use services, then you don't 
have to pay anything other than the premium. And if the premium is zero, then that might be a good deal. Um, you, you are part of a network. Sometimes this has very advantageous because you have integrated uh, medical services within the network. Um, emergency care is always possible. So let's say you have a plan that is in San Mateo County and you go to Florida and you have an emergency. If you have an emergency, um, your plan will always uh, honor the expenses as if you were in the network. So there is no worry here in case, in case of emergency. What you cannot do is you if you travel a lot and you just want to go for a doctor visit, it's not an emergency care kind of situation that would not be covered. Um, you can switch these plans uh, once a year. And when you switch it, because you could you could be with um, with Stanford and you decide you're going to switch to um, uh, uh, AARP. So you have a chance. You're not locked for the rest of your life. You can, you can change. Okay, what are the disadvantages? Well, they're regional. So if that's okay with you, as long as you know that up front, this is okay. But it's regional. You do need a referral because they're typically HMO-based. And if it's an HMO-based, your primary is the one who has to give you a referral. Cost could be in unpredictable, depending on the services. Um, and here's kind of a, a very important thing. You cannot go back uh, to a Medigap after the trial period. What does that mean? You could always drop that Medicare Advantage and have the A and B, but the plus part is, is really the problem. Medigap has this six-month period. Um, Typically, but in the case of they said, if you want to try Medicare Advantage for the first time, we'll give you a one year. And if you exceed that one year, sorry, you will not be able to go back um, to get to buy a Medigap. So this is this is a very, very important decision as you compare these two alternatives. Okay, so here's a summary. Uh, original Medicare versus uh, Medicare Advantage. You can go any doctor, any hospital that would take Medicare anywhere in the U.S., Typically here, they're uh, network-based, except in case of emergency. Um, you don't need a referral. Here, you uh, typically need a referral. Okay, so with that, we covered original Medicare versus the Medicare Advantage. Any questions so far? Yes, Maha, we have one question. And the question is, who should have a Medigap plan? high income or low income or high medical care utilizers? So who should have Medigap? Um, anyone can, anybody can have Medigap. Um, and basically, uh, the, from my experience, the people that buy Medigap is one peace of mind. They pay an insurance. If they have original Medicare, right, they have, they would be too worried if, they're exposed to that 20% and also the uh, deductible of part A. Um, nobody can predict how you, you're going to age. Um, if you can predict what's going to happen in 10 years to your health, uh, that would be great. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So mm -hmm. if you are in a situation where you, where you feel that you can... Um, get a plan and the plan could you know they're not really that expensive when you compare them to the, the medicare advantage um what we don't recommend is to have just a and b uh, because that's just too much of a financial risk these are the typical questions that we when we do counseling one-on-one -on -one, we would sit down with you and basically actually run through the numbers so that you would feel you know exactly what we're talking about how much this would cost versus the other way and what's the pros and the cons so you actually have a concrete example um, so you can make an informed decision moving on let's talk about enrollment process and an enrollment process is it's really predicated on you have to decide what you want right do you want original medicare by itself you want a you want an original medicare plus or do you want a Medicare Advantage? So that's a very fundamental decision you need to have up front. You need to understand the rules and your rights and when to enroll and how to enroll. So let's quickly go through that. So again, I cannot underemphasize this decision up front because we have people that signed up 
for something here, let's say Medicare Advantage, and they come back and say, only if I knew, if I understood, then I would have done something different or vice versa. So it's really important to come in with open eyes up front. So original Medicare only, and we say this big financial exposure, potentially also some penalties, and I will talk about that. Uh, original Medicare plus the Medigap and the Part D for a prescription drug or uh, Medicare Advantage. So these are basically the three choices that, that you have to live with uh, when you start Medicare. Okay, so um, this or this. I keep repeating myself, but I just want to make sure everybody really understand. Option one, original Medicare by itself. Option two is the entire stack. Option three is all in one plan. Okay, the basic enrollment. So you must enroll in part B when you become eligible, when you turn 65. Otherwise, you will have to pay a penalty. So there are exceptions. And the exception is if you are working, actively working, you or your spouse and are covered under a, an active employer health group plan. So this goes also for your spouse. So basically Medicare is saying, look, if you have a health plan with, and you're working, we're not gonna make you uh, take um, Medicare. Um, so that's, you can, uh, but if you are not working or uh, emphasize active, not, an, not a retirement plan, an active employment plan, then uh, if you're not working, then you really must take a part B. If you don't take part B for every year you delay enrollment, you have a 10% penalty. So it can really add up. And that penalty stays with your premium for the rest of your life. Because they don't want people to, when they're turned 65 and healthy, uh, say, well, I don't need to sign up. And then when they're uh, 75, they come and sign up and they say, well, where have you been all these years? And we could have made some premium that goes into the, the general fund. Similarly, you must enroll in Part D for prescription drug. Um, or another creditable coverage. But what does it mean credible? What the federal government says is that if you have another plan that is as good as or better than what Medicare has to offer, what these companies have to offer, then uh, you don't have to pay a penalty. But if you don't have that plan and you don't sign up for Part D, you have a 1% each month and uh, until you sign up and then these percentages add up and stay as a supplement to you, whatever premium you have to pay for the rest of your life. And um, you would notice if you are working, your company would know that you're 65 and they would once a year send you this letter, uh, dear Mr. So-and-so, uh, we just wanna let you know that your, uh, your prescription drug plan is creditable. And you kind of scratch your head and look at that and say, what are they trying to tell me? But, you know, just save those letters or, um, and later on, if, uh, if you sign up for Medicare and they ask for proof, then you have something. Uh, Medigap is optional. So as, op as opposed to the part B and D, they're kind of optional, but with penalty, Medigap, does not have a penalty. You don't have to sign up for Medigap, but if you don't sign up uh, in a certain time frame, then you might not be able to sign up again. So that's the, kind of the penalty that you, but it's still nevertheless an optional. Uh, Medicare Advantage is also optional. So you don't have to have a Medicare Advantage. Um, you could just stay with A and B. That's completely up to you. Okay, your rights, uh, you have uh, the guaranteed right, this is a federally guaranteed right, to be able to enroll in the Medigap plan within six months from the time you be, your Part B is effective. And that means that you can do it without any medical underwriting. They don't care what kind of illnesses you had in the past. Um, that that basically gets wiped out um, when, when you when you have this medical guarantee. Uh, this guarantee also um, comes other time other than the six month period. So in, in cases, for example, you move, you were living in California and you moved to Boston uh, and your plan doesn't exist. You had a Medicare Advantage and Boston doesn't have this regional plan. So if that actually happened, then you get your guaranteed right again. You get to, to 
to choose again, if you happen to be living in Boston, to choose whichever, if you at that time decide to get a Medigap, you get another uh, shot at it. Um, in California, we're extremely fortunate to be able to also change our Medigap plans um, within 60 months from our birthday. It's called the birthday rule. That doesn't exist in, like, if you live in Nevada, there's not a thing. So if you sign up for a Medigap plan, you stick with it. Uh, in California, you have the choice to change plan once a year, and that once a year start on your birthday. It's called the birthday rule, and it goes for 60 days. Okay, enrollment period. I apologize, this is kind of a busy slide here, but I'll walk you through it uh, as... Uh, so there are different times where you can sign up for Medicare. So the first time ever you sign up for Medicare is the first column here is called initial enrollment period. This is initial because it's initial. You just, you just turned 65. So this is your first crack at it. What's the purpose of this is to enroll into Medicare. Now, from the month of your birthday, you have three months before and three months after your birthday. This is the seven month period where you can sign up for Medicare. Most people would say, well, I'm not going to wait three months after my, my birthday. I want my, when I'm 65, I want to immediately that month uh, to go on Medicare. But that's kind of the rules. This is the, in, the, the sign up period for initial enrollment period. Now, what happens if you miss that for whatever reason? So if you miss that, then you can enroll in A or B. Let's say you only sign up for A and you didn't sign up for B when, when you had this three months before and after. Then each year from January to the end of March, you can sign up. And um, as of 2022, if you sign up from January, between January and March, your plan does not become effective until July. So you'd have a gap. Luckily, uh, with the uh, with the new uh, Inflation Reduction Act, we changed the rules. So now, whenever you sign up for, if you missed your sign up and you sign up in March, your plan will become in April effective. So you don't have to wait a long time before your plan become effective. So initial enrollment when you turn 65, general enrollment if you miss it, special enrollment. Special enrollment is basically for people. Uh, mainly for people that are working. So like you're working and you didn't sign up were at your original uh, time to sign up. So uh, that's your time. You get you get you get personally a special enrollment period. And that special enrollment period starts the day your employer plan ends and goes for eight months. But most people are not gonna wait eight months. They want their enrollment to be immediately after their health plan with their company ends. So that's a special enrollment period. Now, annual enrollment period, and this was come, the terminology comes a little bit sloppy. So annual enrollment period is, is the time where you already have Medicare, but you want to reevaluate it. Do I like my, my Medicare Advantage plan? Do I like my uh, Part D plan? And that's the plan, that's the time of the year from October 15th to December 7th. Sometimes this you'd say, people will call it open enrollment. Sometimes you call it annual enrollment. You would, unfortunately, they use that term interchangeably. But this is basically the time coming up now from October 15th to December 7th. And I will go through what exactly you can and cannot do in that period. So that's the end. Then there is, let's say you signed up and um, you get another shot. If you feel that you made a mistake with your Medicare Advantage plan, you signed up for a Medicare Advantage plan and it's effective January and you start using it January and you say, oh my God, I really hate it then you have a chance to, to change it, okay? So these are basically the different times that you can do something. Most of the people really care about this here and this here, and only if they're working, they worry about this one. Okay, so now is the, the how, how do you sign up? Now, if you're collecting social security, remember you can collect social security when you are 62. 
you um, you are auto enrolled because Social Security know who you are, and because they're giving you a Social Security check, so they automatically enroll you. They send you a nice letter saying welcome to Medicare, and here's your nice card, and they they tend to do that um, three months uh, before spelling here before your birthday. So uh, so basically, you don't need to do much. Uh, if you're not collecting Social Security, because you don't need to collect Social Security until 70, maybe. So if you're not collecting Social Security, you actually have to go yourself and sign up for Medicare with the Social Security Administration. But you can do it in person or online. Now, as far as Part D, uh, there is no auto-enrollment. You have to actually review the plan. You have to look at your county, go to Medicare.gov put out your zip code and uh, answer all the questions and it will give you um, all the uh, the information and you review it or ask for um, HICAP to help you review it. And you enroll either online or uh, by phone and you select whether you want the payment to go out of your social security check if you are collecting social security or you wanna pay it directly to the provider. But there is no auto enrollment. You've had actually do something to enroll. Same thing go with Medigap. There is no open, open enrollment. There are places where we give you the plan, describe the plan, so you can select the plan that's appropriate for you, and you can enroll either online or by calling them. Same thing with Medicare Advantage. There is no auto enrollment. You have to actually go to medicare.gov or call various companies, you're going to get a lot of mail that they're trying to market to you directly. Um, and uh, enter your medication because these plans also include medication. So you have a full picture of what it might cost you. And you pay them monthly. OK, any questions? Uh, yes, Maha, we have a couple of questions. Uh, the first question is, do most MA plans offer vision and dental? or do just a few offer it? Um, there, there are a few, and it changes every year. So depending really on the competitive environment, some that might kick it in to make it more attractive. And uh, it's not apple to apple, so you have to look very carefully what do they mean by uh, dental coverage? Is this like a once a year um, dental cleaning or um what is what how much money so it's it's varied and and it really changes depending on the competitive environment a little bit about a premium and income so um when we talk this is a very busy chart here but there is something for part b and part d uh the premium is income related there is an irma adjustment what that means is if you are a single filer or a joint filer, in this range, 91,000 or 182,000 adjusted gross income, your premium will be the standard premium, which is $170.10 for 2022. Now, if your income goes up, your premium goes up. And this is a step. So if, if you're $1 over uh, 91,000, your premium goes from 170 to 238. And this is something important to look at, you know, when you're trying to look at your tax and do some, some management a little bit ahead of time. Uh, same thing with uh, part D. So if, again, if your income is, um, is in this range, a standard range, uh, the premium, there is no added. So whatever company, if you were going to uh, Humana and Humana says your premium, is ten dollars there is no added thing on it um, but if your income is higher then you would have an incrementally um, higher adder to your to your uh, plan one thing important is that um, only part b and d are indexed so medigab is not indexed it's whatever they tell you it is it is independent of your income um, the income they look at, Social Security looks at your income from the IRS from prior two years, two years ago, because there is this kind of a slow interface. So 
to determine your 22 premium, they actually physically look at your 2019 tax. But what happened is if you were working in 2019 and your income was really high, and you get this letter in 2022 that says, Dear Mr. So-and-so, um, we have to tell you that your premium now is really high because your income was like $500,000. And um, sorry about that. But you have uh, a remedy. And that remedy, most people don't know about this remedy. You Once you get a letter like that and you know that your income for that coming year is not going to be anywhere near your income two years ago, you go to Social Security and say, use those words, I have a life event. And typically a life event is, I'm, you know, I'm not working anymore or I'm working less hours. But with this life event, please do not use my income from two years ago. Um, I'm projecting my income to be X. And obviously you have to have a good projection of your income. Otherwise, they will catch on to you. Uh, but this is pretty important. You don't have to live with whatever number they give you. You have a remedy to be able to fix that premium adjustment. Questions before I go to the last part? Um, no questions right now. Okay. So let's talk about details about this coming annual enrollment period. What can you and cannot do in this time between October 15th and December 7th? Okay. So I'm specifically only talking about this uh, annual enrollment period here, this that I'm showing here, this this line here. This is the time to re you already have Medicare. This is time to reevaluate your coverage. So what does that mean? Okay, first of all, when is it? October 15th is the first day you can sign up for something. December 7th is the last day you can sign up for something. And the coverage starts the following January and it's locked for that calendar year. So that's the annual enrollment period. Okay, so first of all, make sure you understand what you already have, because if you don't know what you have, then you cannot change it, right? So do you have Medicare? Do you have original Medicare only? Do you have Part D and Medigap? Or do you have Medicare Advantage? That's your starting point. Okay, what can you do? So during this enrollment period, this time of the year, you could say, well, you know, I only had A and B, but I really want to go to Medicare Advantage because these 20% I learned the hard way that they were painful and um, I need to go that way because I have more protection, perhaps as opposed to just the plain original Medicare. You can go also the other way around. You can say, I got into Medicare Advantage and I really hate it. Now, if you're within the one year trial period, Okay, you can always go back. You can always go back to A and B, okay? Now, what you also can do, um, you, could, you could be here and say, I have a plan, but I'm looking at the, what they're offering for next year. My doctor's is not on it. My hospital is not on it. And I want to change the plan I have here. So you're ch changing within plans. The next thing is you say, well, I had a plan part D and uh, I'm just looking here. I got this letter that says my medication got to be very expensive. The premium went up. Again, you could, you could change the plan you already have. And if you didn't have one, you could add one. What you cannot do is anything with Medigap. You cannot do anything with Medigap. Um, so pretty much if you're going from here to... Um, to Medicare Advantage, the only th and you already had the entire the entire stack here. What you need to do is you need to drop Medigap because you cannot have Medigap and Medicare Advantage. So again, you can switch between these two things, not the entire stack, just these two things. You could change within the Medicare Advantage. You could change Part D if you had a Part D. And you should drop a uh, Medigap if you decide to go in this direction. So that's all you can do during this, um, this period between October 15th and uh, December 7th. How to do it? Okay. So depending what you're going to do. So if you're going from original Medicare to uh, an MA plan, Medical Advantage, you go to Medicare.gov. Or you can call HICAP, say, what Medicare Advantage do you do we have in our county? You enter your medication, 
you review the plan and you enroll for it. And if you had Medigap, you should drop it. The other way around, if you had an MA and going to original Medicare, then you have to call your plan and say, well, I hate you, uh, let's disenroll. And you go, um, you need a prescription drug. So you need to Medicare.gov and sign up for a Part D plan, um, enter your medication and a review um, and enroll the plan you like. These are, must say, these two things are unusual things to happen during uh, the open enrollment. The most likely things that people do and encourage people to do during open enrollment is, um, is basically these two other things. You have a Part D prescription drug plan and you want to make sure it's good for you. First of all, don't assume it's good just because it was good one year. It doesn't mean it's good the second year because they do change the uh, co-payment all the time. They change the formulary all the time. So um, please always check your medication every year. Uh, and it, if it turns out that your current plan is the best, great. You don't have to do anything. But if you need to change, this is the time to change. Same, same goes with the Medicare Advantage. This is the time to say, uh, do they cover my medication? That is my doctor on it? Am I comfortable with the hospital they have? So this is 90% of the time that people are doing changes in these two areas. Uh, these two things is unusual. It just means that uh, you made a fundamental choice up front that you're not happy with, as opposed to you already decided which way you're going to get Medicare and you just, um, just want to optimize the actual plan that you have. Okay, so Medicare.gov, this is a website, Medicare.gov, not Medicare.com, sends you somewhere completely different. You get this nice picture here, and it says um, you, you click on Find uh, My Plan, and um, it, will, it will say, okay, do you want to log on? If it's your account, then you can, you can create an account, so it saves your information, but you can also do it as a guest. So you could put your zip code in there and you tell it what you're looking for. Am I looking for a plan uh, plan D? Am I looking for Medicare Advantage? And you say apply. And once you do that, it would walk you through step by step. Uh, enter your medication and so on and so forth. So, and you go through it and then at the end you get a summary of what's available in your county. Um, one basic thing to understand is that all the plans like Part D, for example, they must follow specific rules. So they have to have uh, uh, medication, at least two different medications for, for each disease. But it doesn't mean that they have to have the medication that you take on their formulary, but they have to somewhat cover it. Um, very important is that uh, each plan has a, a pharmacy scheme and they divide it into preferred, standard or mail order. So when you go through this analysis, looking at the website and you say, well, uh, it asks you what, what pharmacy you want to go to, you, you, you'd say Wal Walgreen, for example, because Walgreen is where you always go. However, um, the, the plan, the best plan uh, may have a different preferred. Their preferred might be uh, CVS. You wouldn't know that. Um, so we encourage people to open the options of multiple pharmacies so you truly can see that is a preferred, uh, it will tell you if it's a preferred as opposed to a standard. So if you get something that says standard, it means that you can get it cheaper. And in many cases, people, when, when we ask people what pharmacy you go to and they say, I go to this particular pharmacy and we just blindly run it, it's not really to their best interest because um, we, as, a, as, a, as a rule, we'd run it into multiple pharmacies and we say, oh, by the way, uh, do you mind going across the street to CVS? Uh, you would save X. And most of the cases, people will say, sure, if I know I can save more, I, I'll, I'll walk across the street. So this is something to, to understand. Um, they have their own formularies. <clears throat> so uh, not every... every um, Every plan covers the every every medication, and every plan has their own restriction, whether it's quality, uh, quantity limited, whether it's pre-authorization or a step therapy. So this is something that to look at very carefully when you're analyzing the results 
Um, and it's best to do that during that uh, annual open enrollment time. So when you get locked in in the beginning of the year, um, this is something that you, you're you happy with. Again, the plans are zip code specific. I get people saying, oh, my cousin has um, ARP and they're very happy with it. Well, we don't know where your cousin lives and also what medication. So it could be drastically different. Okay, so how can HICAP or our sister organization, sometimes it's called SHIP, um, in other counties help you? We could have one-on-one -on -one, um, counseling. We uh, can review your Part D. Basically, you give us a list of their medication and we can enter it and give you um, the top three options. Uh, we can assist you in the enrollment process. We can sit next to you and enroll you all online or get on the phone with you and enroll you, uh, help you with the enrollment. We can also contact Medicare uh, to follow up if you have some certain issue. Uh, we have a special uh, Medicare privilege um, that we can call them to look in your account and find out what's going on if there's a problem. We can, um, if you have an appeal, we can help you with an appeal. Uh, we can um, we aggregate the information. So instead of getting um, 50 different mails with, from 50 different companies, we try to give you a nice summary. At least that gives you the ba basic information. And once you narrow it down, then you can drill down and look at the literature of the company. So you don't, at least for the first, for the first look, you have a, an aggregate summary. So our job is to educate, inform, and advocate on your behalf. What we cannot do is pick a plan for you or tell you what is the best uh, way to receive Medicare. This is very, very personal, and this is something you have to do yourself. Okay, last but not least is a very quick update about the, um, the 2023 uh, uh, provisions that are becoming active with the Inflation Reduction Act that just passed. So insulin copay will be capped at $35 per month in 2023 for Medicare beneficiaries. All vaccines, uh, the copays will disappear. And this is very important because people who are looking with the Shingrix vaccine, um, they realized when they got on Medicare it was very expensive. So in 2023, all vaccines uh, will have zero copay. How it's exactly implemented, we'll have to see uh, because we haven't seen the implementation yet. Um, the other updates are coming. There were there was these uh, various times where you, if you sign up, certain time your coverage would be delayed by two months or six months. All that is disappearing in 2023. So the new rule for Part B is whenever you sign up, the next month is going to be effective. Um, the uh, Apparent good news, we don't know, we haven't seen the numbers yet, but apparently the premium are expected for Part uh, B and D national average to go down. We're certainly you have to wait and see, at least that's what the projection is. Well, thank you, Maha, for all this great information. And uh, thank you all for joining us this morning.